Thank you guys for subscribing to my channel and thank you very much for viewing this video. I'm going to show you now on Excel how to start on a an Excel spreadsheet and firstly I will explain the following tools. You can see here there is a section where you have font and then the second one is a section under alignment. Please consider that all these they come from a tab which is home up there. And we also have another group called numbers. It's a section also. We have another one called styles. We have cells. And then we have editing. Now, before we can use all these tools that I've explained, let's start to look at the layout of creating your spreadsheet. This section here. It's where you are going to be creating whatever you want to create so that later you can be able to put a uh, data and later you can be able to do calculations. And you can see that this is not a plain page where you can just type paragraphs like we normally do on a text document, or like other text documents. This is where you have grids and this is actually plotted so that you can have rows and columns so that you can put your data. So if you look on the left, you have rows which are numbered. If you look on top there, you have columns which are lettered, like they are actually described by alphabetical letters. So these are just your guidelines so that you can have sections where you're going to put all the information that you have to put. Now, I'm going to start by creating a simple spreadsheet so that you see how your data or how your information can be spread along this spreadsheet. Firstly, I will type, but I have to put my cell selector in one of the blocks which are called cells. I just clicked in that cell, we call it a cell, and that cell is actually A1 because it's a combination of a column name and a row name. So I'm inside A1. You can even see there it's written on the name box A1 because that is the current position where I am. If I move it and put it anywhere, you will see that there on the name box, it will change to be something else. I just moved my cell selector somewhere else and you can see that there on the name box it has changed to be E7 because I'm now inside a cell which is a combination of column E and row 7. Now that becomes E7. So wherever you are at that moment it is called a, a, a there is a cell address that is where you are. So a cell address is actually indicated in the name box. That is actually called a name box. So let, let's start to create our own spreadsheet. As I'm going to do it, you will see how we do it. Then we can see how we can actually make it looks, uh, to look uh, better after this. Now, you can notice that as I was typing each and every heading to create my spreadsheet. So some of them, the headings when I type and go to the next cell and go to the next one to type what I have to type. Regardless of whatever you are creating, you have to put each and every weight on its own cell. So you can see that some of them are cutting because the cell is smaller. So that cell is controlled by the column. 
So the columns are lettered up there, A, B, C, D, E. So I have to go between the columns and put my mouse or my pointer. It will change to show that it's pointing to drag left and right. Then I will adjust my column so that whatever I've typed becomes clear. If you check there between A and B, there is a small line. B and C, there is a small line. C and D, there is a small line. So if you put your mouse on top of that small line, your mouse will change to point left and right at the same time, indicating that you can actually adjust. Let me show you. You see, I've just put my mouse between A and B. The arrow changed to point left and right. Now I'm going to do the same thing between B and C so that you see what I'm talking about. You can see it's pointing left and right. So while it's pointing like that, when you see that arrow, you can hold your mouse button and drag to the right or either to the left. But in this case, we want to enlarge the column. So I will drag to the right to make sure that customer ID and customer name and all the other things are clear. There. Now you realize that now they are clear. They were just hiding because the columns by default they come smaller. So whatever you type even if it's a long word to make your column headings, you can later adjust it to, to make it bigger. So what I'm going to do now is to fill the table that I'm creating with information that I have to put. So I'm, quickly, I'm just quickly going to type what I have to type so that we can look at how we can make this look better. Now, I've typed the names of the customers with their customer ID. Maybe it's a store that I'm managing. Then I've got customers. So I, each and every customer has their own code. Now I have to put the amount that maybe they are owing me. And later on, I have to look at uh, how much the, the balance is and so on. So now, because now we are talking about money, amount and balance is money. Anything that is money, to avoid disappointments later when we do calculations, you don't type the currency symbol. You type only the figures or the values that represents the amount of money that you have to put there. So, for instance, if it was going to be uh, 250 rands, I won't say R250 because when you put R from the keyboard, you are actually putting it as if it's a letter or a code or a, a, a an item that has a description in terms of serial number or something. So you just have to put the figures. Later on, we'll format those figures to be currency of South African rents. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to put 250, but I won't say rents. So this is what I'm trying to say. I just type 250 but in case if you know that is 250 rands don't put r microsoft excel has an option of formatting that figure to be south african rands so i'm going down so that is how much they are having as amounts those three people what I'm going to do, I'm going to format all those three amounts to be currency of South African rents. This is how I'm going to do it.
what I have done there is to highlight all the amounts which are going to be changed to South African rands, like R, they must have a symbol of R, all of them I've highlighted them. So what I do now, I have to right click and go to format cells. So what I've done here, what I've done here is to right click inside the highlighted text and then go to format cells and then I get this screen. So from this screen, I have to choose the category to be currency and I will have to choose South African rents. This is how you do it. Now you have noticed that when I click currency, I will see that on the screen it was showing me R and then I click OK. Now it came. Now you can see that this is money. I have 250 with no cents, 300 with no cents and 350 with zero cents also. So now this is how you actually create a spreadsheet, putting numbers and differentiating them with money. So you can see that customer ID it's actually a number and amount is a, a money so the difference there is that money will be described by a symbol of currency which you don't type but you have to insert using format cells so now i'm going to show you how to um, make borders around your grid I highlighted all the information using the grid lines and I just highlighted. Now I'm going to insert all lines around the spreadsheet. So when I say all, it means that everywhere where there is text, they will be surrounded by lines or borders. This is how you do it. Under the group of font, clicked the drop down arrow and chose all borders and it came to, the borders came to surround all my text and now all my text is having, uh, they are having all borders. See. So now if you want to format your headings to be bold and underline or italics, you can do that but you have to highlight first like this. Now you can see that now all my headings are having another style of text or formatting which is bold. So let's assume that probably you want customer name, customer name, this heading to appear in a different type of uh, style. Um, for instance, if I want the name to be under custom and I want ID to be under custom. So I have to apply what we call rep text, which is the tool that you see under the group of alignment there. But I cannot click there before I go and click what I want to rep text. So I have to highlight those two first and I can click that option. Now, you notice that rep text is now selected. There is a shade around my button rep text. So it means those two names or two headings are enabled to rep. So I just have to increase the row height and reduce the column width like this.
so you you have noticed that when i reduce the column width it was going to cut name but because the cell has been enabled to wrap the other one goes below it doesn't hide anymore like it did in the beginning when we started even customer id when i try to cut id by uh, reducing the width of the column b it cuts id but id goes under customer so but now if your your row one is still small uh, id and name won't show because they are under customer all of them but customer is taking the whole row and anything that is below cannot be seen so i had to adjust going down like we did now this is just the basics of starting on microsoft excel thank you for watching please subscribe to this channel because more uploads are still coming thank you for those who subscribed and i hope that you are going to be watching this and learning more you can use this for your own things thank you for watching see you next time